Faders. Yep. Mute button. Okay. Oh, gain. Yep. Oh, oh that, that's the compressor right there. EQ. Yep, I got that. What does the mono button do? Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Dave with Alum House Sound and today we're going to talk about the funny little mono button. No, if you push it, it's not going to make your console explode. It's not going to blow up your mix either, but hopefully it can help you. So the intent of this video is just to help you refine your live stream audio. Most of us are really comfortable when we're mixing the house sound for our front of house mix for our room that we're always in. And many of us nowadays are using the same console to not just mix the front of house, but also our live stream. We've got headphones on, we're at the console. We have one mix engineer that's controlling two mixes, house and stream. And we're trying to put our headphones on and hear the differences and make changes to both and, and make minor tweaks and do all those things to get the sound great. Now, this mono button is a great tool that you can start to use immediately that can help you really refine your live stream sound. Now, many times when I talk about practicing, I talk about thinking like a recording engineer, talk about thinking like a, a home recording artist or home studio musician. And so what I mean by that is we take our tracks, maybe we multi-track record at church and we come home and we start to mix and refine our skills at home using plugins like compression, EQ and reverbs and delays. And we're trying to figure out the tendencies of vocals and different instruments that we have access to, how we can group them, how we can use compressors and all of these tools to refine our knowledge that when we get back in our church or into our venue at our console, we can go ahead and implement those on whatever our mixing console is. Now, when you start to research about mixing in a home studio or in any studio, a lot of times you hear them referred to mixing in mono for 80% of the time. That seems like a lot. And what they're trying to do when you take a mix and you, you sum it down into mono, you have to be really specific about the EQing of each instrument, the volume of each instrument. Because when you take something that's stereo, you can hear the left and rights and your head works that space out. But when you dump them together in mono, you really have to have the EQing and everything separated and different and, and tweaked just right so that your mix doesn't fall apart in mono. It'll also isolate any problems you have with your volume. So if we want the, the lyrics or the, the vocals to be on top, we can do that in mono. We've got a good band set up. You build it all the same. You're just not listening to it in stereo. And a lot of times what happens to me, you'll hear in this example when we get into it, in stereo, the band sounds great. My guitars and everything sound great. My drums sound good. My vocals are right down the middle. And what happens is I hear those outside parts pretty loud and my vocals are kind of quiet. So I bring the vocals up to meet the band sound. But then when I go to mono, what I hear is the vocals are way too loud. And so we can use this mono button going back and forth from mono to stereo to help make sure that the mix stays consistent your entire event. So let's dive into the console, into the computer, and let's go get some examples rolling. All right, so we're gonna talk about this mono button now. I have X32 Edit pulled up. I have come up here to the top right and hit the monitor section. And this is in the monitor section, gives us the ability to, uh, to hit this mono button right here. Uh, that's gonna be mono versus stereo. Now, while I'm talking right now, I just have one microphone going right down the middle and, and there, there's no reverb or anything on it. So you're not gonna hear the differences, but this is gonna be a crucial tool 
for when you are mixing your live stream audio, uh, what we're going to do is a lot of times when we listen in the, the full spectrum, the full width, we're going to hear the stereo spectrum, all of our reverbs, delays, effects, uh, any panning that we've done is really going to make it sound big and wide. And we're going to hear that pretty prominently in our headphones or on our, on our studio monitors out in the width. And then our vocals, which are usually going to be in the middle, uh, those vocals vocals are going to seem quiet. And so what our tendency to do is to to drive that vocal volume up, but then when we put it in mono, mono is going to give us an opportunity to hear everything kind of broken down without that extra volume on the far outsides, and we can then refine the mix. We'll quickly, usually we will quickly identify that our vocals are a little too hot. So I want to listen to this example here, and we can have, um, well, we'll just listen to it. This is from my live stream earlier in the year, and we will listen to the vocals. This is in stereo, kind of as it is. Let's see what we get. All right, so that's in in with now the vocals there to me are on top of the mix. Now I'm gonna just play the same thing right now, and I've got this this vocal um, DCA here on the left hand side that we can see, and see it's at plus three right now. When I'm listening in stereo, in full stereo, that somewhere in that plus two to plus three range is what tends to feel right to my head. But when I listen in mono, I quickly realize it's too much. So I'm going to hit play. I'm going to push the mono button. So you're going to see this mono button light up over here, and then we'll hear the difference. And then you'll see me adjust the DCA back down to where I think it should fit in that mono feel. All right, here we go. All right, so we can see pretty quick that going into mono, uh, we can identify because everything is balanced uh, kind of one for one. You don't have all the panning and all the extra effects. Unfortunately, I will say that some of the effects on this X32, as good as they are in terms of emulation, they do kind of fall apart in um, in mono. And that's, that's understandable reverbs. Reverb emulations are made to be in stereo. The delay that I'm using is delay plus chamber. The delay part is not too bad in uh, in mono, but the the chamber part of it kind of falls apart. So anyway, let's listen to this again, and we will uh, we will again see what it sounds like going back and forth between mono and stereo. So I'm going to put this back up where it was. This was let's say three dB. Okay, and here we go. Let's listen, and then we'll make some adjustments. So quickly just kind of punching around there, what you might have seen me do, uh, I started out with it at plus 3 dB, then I hit mono, and I dropped it way down, and I, I dropped it way down here just to see what it sounded like without the vocals pretty much at all. Uh, 
you're hearing the vocal still, but that's from the effects. Then I brought it up and zero felt really good. There's a reason that zero feels good. And that's because that's kind of where my mix tends to land. And then I, I pulled it up to about plus five. I went out of mono. And then I heard that change into stereo and it felt again like I wanted to pull it back up. You saw me go back up to plus two, uh, but at plus two, it seemed like too much. So went back into mono, found that that kind of zero to plus 0 0.5 kind of felt the best for me at this moment in the song. So again, using mono, going between mono and stereo is a great benefit for your live stream mix. Even if you're isolated in a room, you can keep your headphone volume turned up just a little louder than what the room sounds like so that you can kind of get that isolated, quote unquote, isolated feel. Um, and, and again, it's mostly vocal placement. The band, you know, if I if I unmute this with just the band and drums, let's listen to that for a second and go between uh, mono and stereo. So this is stereo. Right, so... The, the bass is still right in the center. The guitars are panned a little bit. The uh, acoustics are have some hard left and right panning going on if you've watched my acoustic guitar video. Uh, but when I hit the mono, they just all sum right into mono. They don't really fall apart. It's just the effects changing that we hear. So the blend there is pretty good. The biggest thing I hear with live stream mixes is that the vocals usually are too hot and using this mono button to help you isolate that mix of when you need more vocal or when you need less vocal probably, uh, that's gonna be a big tool for you to use. So find that mono button on your console and put that thing to work. All right, well, that's just a quick video about that mono to stereo mixing, being able to use that mono button at the right time. And hopefully you heard the differences and how we really need to interact with that mono and the stereo differently so we can refine the mix really well. Now, if you like this type of content, go ahead and hit the like button. That helps out the YouTube stuff that I don't really understand how it works. Also, if you want to get more content and find out the next time I put out a video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I will be doing a troubleshooting series next and we'll be using some of you guys that have subscribed and commented on a previous video to get those troubleshooting scenarios figured out, help you and help others. And also, if you know anybody else that's only mixing in stereo, go ahead and share this video with them so they can learn how to use the mono button. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.